Welcome, welcome, everybody who's joining. Welcome on the webinar. My name is Susanna. We want to ask you to join um, our first poll here. Uh, we want to know where you're joining us from. And obviously, most of us are uh, working remotely. I think everybody is working remotely these days. And the webinar is about remote work as well. Uh, so we want to know where you are joining us from. And if it's living room, kitchen, bedroom, kids room, garden or balcony. And I'm now fully with you. Welcome everyone. My name is Christina. We will be starting in a couple of minutes. Uh, while you are all waiting for the other participants to join in, please uh, join us in this call at the beginning. Where are you joining us from? We would love to find out. I normally jump from uh, the kitchen. So <laughs> uh, since we've been running webinars with Christina several times, uh, this is our thing <laughs> uh, to run these webinars and it's 4.59 for us. I think we'll be waiting a little bit more. Um, in the meantime, I do recommend uh, grabbing a piece of paper, a pen. We have plenty of great content ready for you. Uh, so it would be great if you could grab your notebook and start scribbling in, typing in, writing down what you hear. Uh, so that you can actually get something out of this webinar um, and remember and also use it in your remote meetings or for your remote team i just wanted to say that perhaps we could slowly start and kick things off i think we have plenty of people online already that's right uh, so for those of you thank you very much for joining uh today uh, we are talking about uh, virtual team building activities that you can do for your remote teams and um, just to introduce ourselves, my name is Susanna. Uh, my colleague here is Christina. Uh, we are both in charge of education in Slido and I'm in charge of content. Uh, Christina is in charge of outreach. Hi, Christina. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what we would love to talk about today uh, is basically uh, we prepared 15 activities uh, that you can do and we divided it into four areas uh, to stay aligned with your team, boost performance, build a team spirit, and get to know your colleagues better. Throughout the whole webinar, you can, of course, ask questions uh, that we will address at the end. Uh, so if you want to post your questions, please do that in the right-hand side of the panel if you're watching on your computer. For the full experience, we recommend going full screen. Uh, so you can either clap that, uh, click that in the top right corner or just double tap the video. For those of you watching uh, from your mobile phones, that's possible as well. Um, make sure to uh, participate in the polls, uh, make sure to post your questions as well, and you can click through the tabs there. Um, so yeah. As you all know, guys, uh, we have really uh, been witnesses to something called coronavirus, right? And has really disrupted our entire world and it has really rearranged the, the way we work has rearranged the workplace uh, across many sectors and across many countries. And within just a week or maybe two weeks, so many companies, so many organizations have sent millions of their employees home to work remotely. Now, many of these companies actually did it without any prior preparation. And as a result, uh, we've seen in the month of March, uh, lots of companies and lots of leaders ask uh, very similar questions, such as, how to keep the business going, how to switch to remote, and these kind of very core questions and how to really, really even survive in such a remote setup. Now, as the time progressed and as the time went by, uh, the situation started to stabilize slowly. And so a different kind of set of questions started emerging because now we are or pretty much worked or uh, we are pretty much used to the remote uh, setup, but now we have a different set of questions like how do we keep me people motivated? How can we improve the team communication? How can we really increase that team spirit and team morale? So really the core questions these days is about how do we engage our team and how do we engage the people inside that team? And for those of you who thought that the situation with the remote setup and remote work is just a temporary issue or a temporary kind of situation, many people and many experts around the world think this is not just a temporary thing and the coronavirus may have actually changed the workplace and the way we know it forever. 
So really the remote uh, environment, the remote work is here to stay with us. Uh, in a survey conducted even before the coronavirus, actually 99% of the employees wanted to work remotely at least some of the time for the remaining of their career. So really is something to, to uh, keep in mind. But the question really remains, like how do we keep the company culture in such a remote setup? Now, one way to address this question is really to come up with some uh, team building activities that we try to come up with for you today. As, as Susanna mentioned, we group them according to their, their focus. And if you really uh, tr uh, give these activities a, uh, a go, if you really try them, you can improve the overall communication and the alignment. You can also uh, increase the entire team spirit you can, uh, if you execute these activities well, you can boost the team performance or individual performance as well. And of course, if executed very well, you can build up the trust, which is so very much needed in these remote times between your team members. But before we actually talk about these uh, remote team building activities, we would really love to find out one thing, and that is what is your favorite team building activity? So before we talk about the virtual world and the virtual team building activities, really, what is your favorite? What is that one thing that you really like doing as a team building activity? Feel free to submit your answer. You can uh, write a whole sentence. You can just, oh, I'll call it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we have one answer there already. Happy hour, of course, games, pop quiz. I love to solve a problem together. That's probably one of my favorite ones. Or that we we had escape rooms there, and I love going to escape rooms with uh, our team for sure. Think and pair and share something that includes building something, solving problems. All right, nice one. Having a coffee. I saw quizzes there. I did. We also did. Uh, I think we we're going to mention that too. Uh, but we also did a pop quiz with our team. That was fun. Virtual coffee dates. Oh yeah, Christina, something for us here. <laughs> Outdoor activities. Then for a pint, uh, I'm with that on you. Uh, I'm uh, with you on that one. <laughs> that's something for me as well. Taking time for breakfast together. That's a very nice one as well. Actually, one of our teams is uh, running their remote lunches every Tuesday. I think that's that's a great thing to do as well. But I see that quizzes are super popular. So mm -hmm. many people submitted quiz as their uh, answer. Donut buddies on Slack, we love those. We have them as well. Um, I'm actually supposed to meet with a colleague this week. So these are great answers. Thank you. Creating a dinner party together, beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. So these were just uh, some examples of the in-person team building activities that you can do. But, and some of them are fun. Some of them are more business oriented. And this is also something we are going to talk about today. So there are uh, fun oriented and the more business oriented team building activities that you can try with your teams. And now I pass the word over to you, Susanna, to, to share some more information about this. Thank you. Just as Christina said, uh, some of the well, team building activities are definitely just for fun uh, and to have a little bit of social time. But uh, we believe that team building activities are also about uh, cr well, sharing the knowledge and about uh, cr sharing the information that you need to uh, pass along to the team. And uh, these days in Corona times, it's we couldn't stress it even more that over communication is important and communicating uh, all things well is important so we've uh, maybe these won't be uh, for you as much looking as uh, team building activities but we believe we strongly believe that staying aligned with the team is very important and there are three things that you can do first one and this one is very basic. Uh, it is all hands meeting. Uh, it's very important to, if you have not done these before, 
uh, to have a meeting with the whole team. Uh, this one, uh, the pictures that we are sharing here are mostly from our team meetings, um, for our all hands meetings. Um, I've prepared a little bit of agenda for you that you could look at um, to have a welcome, have um, some information on the last month from the CEO, sharing highlights from the CEO, uh, some business updates from different teams, um, as well as the team updates, which are so important these days because a lot of information doesn't cross um, just like uh, to everybody very easily and have Q&A with the leadership team um, at the end with the feedback. Uh, there is a small tip for you as soon as you are running to your town halls. If you do them already, that's perfect. Maybe have that little bit of thing uh, to meet maybe five minutes before the meeting or maybe 10 minutes before the meeting and have people join in and start talking about like how they are, uh, how is everything, maybe have a specific question for the team. Maybe a little bit like we did at the beginning of the webinar um, and you get the people together um, in a fun way as well. Speaking about the Q&A, uh, the second one here is uh, to run an AMA with leadership. This means ask me anything session. This one doesn't really take any prep time, honestly. All you need to do is, for example, create a Slido event and get people to start asking questions on a specific topic. This picture here that, is, um, um, that we have here is from our meeting when we had uh, the first information on Corona and what was supposed to happen. Um, the first important uh, information information is uh, to collect the questions in advance and then have the leadership team sit down on the call and answer the tough questions and answer them as um, as people are asking them because um, you know these days you cannot just stop by and go to your boss and or go to your manager and start talking to them about something specific uh, that's why these AMA sessions are so important and when we go to a smaller unit um, it's important to have a team get together and as well this is maybe a bit about uh, business here uh, but of course um, if you have a weekly uh, team, me team meeting or anything like that if if you are in person working to, next to each other sometimes you don't even need them weekly but we would strongly recommend having them on a weekly basis you can even decide to have them on a daily basis as a short uh, stand up uh, we just decided with our team to have a little bit of write up every single day of what is everybody doing? Um, if you wanna uh, engage everybody from the team, you can also rotate owners of the meeting who are going to run uh, their, um, the agenda and who are going to um, figure out what's, gonna be, uh, what's going to be said on the team meeting. As I said, these are just the three business ones. Um, my question for you is how often do you get together with your team? We just wanted to know if you guys do it daily, you do it weekly, bi-weekly or monthly, or other. All right, that was a quick answer here. 57% um, so far. Most of you are doing it weekly. Um, honestly, our meetings um, in our team uh, are happening twice a week. So we will have a morning, uh, Monday morning get together and then we will have a Wednesday um, get together which is more of a social call and, and figuring out if we are on the right path uh, to achieve our goals for the week. Uh, we know some teams do it daily, so that's also great. Um, when you're doing bi-weekly and monthly, that's perfect, that's great. Um, we would strongly recommend doing it maybe a little bit more if you are in remote setup, just because it might become lonely, you might forget uh, who your colleagues are. <laughs> no, hopefully you won't. <laughs> All right, so this is from the business side and moving on to Christina. Uh, so Susanna has talked about the importance of team alignment, but actually uh, I will still uh, stick to the bis more business focused uh, type of activities before we jump to the more fun activities. And uh, the second type of activities uh, is all aimed at performance boosting. So of course you don't want just the team to be aligned, but you want them to perform well as well. Now, one of the ways uh, how you can achieve that is to actually start a video call early in the morning and keep it until the end of the work day. Now, this tip is, of course, not a applicable to all types of teams. But if you have, for example, a customer support team, this is what our customer support team does every day. So in the morning, they set up a call, all they, they join in. And uh, of course, they are not uh, talking the entire uh, time. But if they need it, they just need some kind of help from each other. They basically unmute themselves. They ask a question. They help. They get the immediate help. So it really increases their efficiency and their productivity. And you really kind of have that kind of 
touch from your colleagues in the, uh, uh, during in the entire day. Uh, a tip for you here, if you decide to uh, experiment with such an ongoing call with your team, uh, turn on the cameras, really. Even if you are uh, muted, you don't speak, but really just uh, uh, let your colleagues experience your day. So they can meet your pets, they can meet your family, they can meet uh, whoever is on the camera. It really is uh, worth thing to try. The next thing how you can, or the next tip I have for you, how you can uh, boost your performance uh, or maybe boost the individual performance is to really give credit to the silent heroes. So this is an activity that we do once a month and we do it as part of our all hands or town hall meetings. And basically people are encouraged to nominate who was their silent hero that month. And uh, together with that question comes second question of why. So why did you nominate this person for to be the silent hero? You really are giving this credit to individuals uh, like this. And it's really a beautiful way how to really uh, celebrate people. And a tip here, make sure that you agree on the name format of the, of the people that you submit, because of course, some people can have nicknames and then the people, the person who is actually in charge of distributing those answers to the people nominated, to the people who were nominated uh, can uh, maybe not know who was the person with the nickname. So just a practical tip there. Now, if you would like to uh, give uh, an appraisal to a, an entire team, and not just individuals, uh, I recommend to you an activity called Hall of Fame. Uh, you basically collect the uh, entire team's highlights and milestones that you have achieved uh, in a certain uh, period of time, and you collect it into either a document, a presentation, or, or whichever you prefer. And then you uh, come back to this presentation on a regular basis, and you really celebrate those team achievements, team highlights, and uh, team milestones. And it's a really beautiful way how to how to celebrate the people and how to give them credit, and how to really then, uh, as the end effect, uh, boost the performance of the entire team. Uh, here is a great tip from us, uh, or what I would consider a great tip. Uh, I'm not sure if you've ever uh, been in a remote meeting and you've tried to celebrate something and perhaps you try to clap. And as you can imagine, it can feel really awkward because everyone is muted and they cannot really hear you clapping. So what we recommend to you is that you actually agree on some kind of gesture to use with your cameras on to replace the in-person clapping. Now some companies do something like this or they agree basically just on a smile or on a thumb up, but it makes a huge difference if you really pre-agree on this kind of gesture to, to come with the celebration. And uh, here I have a question for you. If you had to think about the last time that you celebrated something together as a team, when was that time? Was it this week, last week, this month, this year, or you can't really remember? Susanna, when did we celebrate something as a team? I was just about to say this. Um, we actually do it every Thursday. And last Thursday, uh, we got together as a bigger team and uh, we always share highlights. We don't call it Hall of Fame, we call it highlights. And for me, it's always, first of all, a great thing to maybe figure out what the rest of the team has been doing and they have been working on. And But the secondly, it's, it's really great um, to maybe appraise uh, my colleague who really helped me and um, just share these highlights that actually, you know, made my day. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it's, a, it's a, I love this. I honestly love this. It's well, super yeah. important to to put the team on a on a positive note. So positivity plays a crucial role in the in the success of your team building activities. And I see that most of you actually celebrated something as a team last week. Well done. Uh, for those of you who can't remember, this is not a good sign. So please make sure that you uh, celebrate with your team regularly and that you think about your achievements on a regular basis. Right over to you, Selena. And just to add, if it's done well, I think it literally last Thursday, it made my day. It made my whole week, honestly. So I think, um, you know, in the, in the remote setup, I think it's really important. All right. And we are moving on to building the team spirit. And I think it's really hard when you don't meet with the people, when you are all online. 
Um, so um, this one, uh, this one is actually one of my favorites here. Uh, when we got back from our Easter holiday, uh, our team leader actually suggested to share a picture from uh, the, the long weekend. And uh, we all shared the picture. This was actually his picture that he went, um, you know, I don't know how it's called, kayaking or whatever, <laughs> rafting. He went rafting and, and just um, had a little bit of fun. Um, and uh, for me, uh, it showed me a little bit of what they were doing or what my, the rest of the team was doing. You can have a photo of the week. You can have a photo of the weekend. Uh, you can do a photo of the work from home. We also did that as a global challenge in our whole company. And it was really fun to see all these different uh, places where people work from, especially when our team from Bali posted some great pictures with, uh, you know, uh, uh, monkeys and stuff. So that was fun. Uh, so I'd really recommend doing that. You will see a little bit into uh, your team's lives um then the one and also very much mentioned in our question here is a virtual pop quiz we started doing these with christina just recently and our team just loves them um it's a great thing you can of course tell the people to grab a drink uh even though they can't do it in a pub we can at least do it remotely uh, remotely uh, virtually and uh do a pop quiz um for us, it was great because we also asked people to um, turn on their cameras as well. Um, and maybe especially in remote setup, having cameras on is just for us, it's a default. Um, and we also commented on the results, maybe picked on some of our colleagues and was, were like, oh, let's see if you know this answer. And I think it just created a great vibe um, and just cheered everybody up a little bit. A small tip, uh, you can always play music in the background. I'm actually trying to do that now uh, so that um, you can loosen up the atmosphere. Or uh, we also invited one of our colleagues to play guitar and sing um, to just like change the dynamic. Um, so that was really fun. Oh, it's not playing. Never mind. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Also, oh, the next one uh, here is a team photo. On the picture, you can see our APAC team. Uh, it's full of girls, <laughs> so they did uh, a great picture with uh, with a little bit of with a little heart. Uh, but you can decide on uh, creating a, a name or a word um, as a team photo, and then share it across the, the whole company. Um, this is also a great source for you for your social media uh, as a company um, to share, and it's. You know, you know, these pictures usually go viral. So uh, I would recommend doing that as well. Um, and this one, as you can see, I'm in the top right corner. Uh, since everybody is remote, there are great online games that you can play. Uh, we have already found some and decided on playing um, just remotely with our colleagues as a, as a, as a part of our team building. Um, so just grab your colleagues, play a game, uh, there is plenty of these, uh, plenty of them online. And just, um, you know, you cannot go to escape room uh, in person nowadays. Uh, so just do it remotely. All right, are you already doing any of these activities that we are trying to show you? Um, if, uh, let's see if, if there is anything new for you. All right, a lot of you are doing some of these, so that's great. And uh, feel free to share some of them with us. Uh, actually, I think we, we saw some, some of the real, the, the in-person ones, uh, but if you have any uh, virtual ones that you wanna share with us, feel free to do that. Uh, some of you not yet, go on and start, um, start straight on. I think they are not as, not a lot of them are just hard to do. So I would start as much as, um, as quickly as you can. And there are some that are doing most of these, so that's great. All right, moving on. Uh, I just uh, wanted to mention that it's beautiful to see how many questions you've been submitting already. So keep them coming. We will get to them at the very end. And now moving on to the fourth category. And my favorite one is the question of how do you get to know your colleagues better when you are all working remotely, right? So that's a tough one. Or is it? Uh, and I would like to start uh, this category by asking if somehow odd the question, who do you drink your coffee with? 
alone, someone I don't drink coffee. What about you, Christina? Do you drink coffee? Who do you drink coffee with? Well, I normally drink coffee, but these days I'm pregnant, so I try to reduce my uh, coffee, caffeine intake. Uh, but yes, I normally drink my coffee with either with my husband or with my colleagues, actually, or alone. If uh, the time doesn't allow it, then uh, then yes, I, I drink it alone. Or actually with my pet as well. Uh, I have a pet, uh, I have a rabbit. But yeah, I don't really get to chit chat with, um, with him any, uh, that much. Uh, of course, right. So the majority of you is uh, drinking coffee alone. Uh, and now we have a tip for you. You can change that. If the time allows uh, for that, uh, why not to set up a virtual coffee with your entire team or with just some people from your team? It's a really great way how you can actually catch up with them and just have informal chats. Now, the important tip here is that you don't just say like, oh, let's have a coffee sometime. It's actually hard to arrange, right? So what works uh, best and what really worked best for us as a team as well was we put it uh, in the team calendar. So for example, our marketing team at Slido, we have it, uh, we have our virtual coffee every day at 2 p.m. Now it's of course, it's voluntary. If you have time, if you would like to join, you basically just uh, dial the link that is in the already in the calendar invite. If you don't have time, no worries. But if you join once a week, of course, it's, it's just beautiful to, to catch up. Now in the remote setup, it can uh, sometimes happen this kind of awkward situation that there is this awkward silence and no one wants to speak or perhaps they don't want to be rude to start a conversation. So in these kind of situations, it's really great that you actually take control and you prepare a set of questions. So you prepare a set of topics that you can potentially discuss. And if you know that you have some introverts on your team, it's really great that you share these topics in advance with them. It really, trust me, uh, it will increase uh, the amount of people that speak uh, during your virtual coffee break uh, because it will give them some time to prepare whether they would like to share something with you or not and how much they would like to share. So uh, make sure that it's in the team calendar and that you have some topics prepared and ideally you have actually shared those topics with your, with your team. Now, once you've already organized your virtual coffee break, then another great activity I suggest uh, that, you, uh, that you tried is the guest the desk uh, team building activity. What you do, basically you encourage your team members to uh, take a photo of their remote uh, work setup at home or at the coffee shop or wherever they are working from or be from the office as well. Uh, and they all send you the photo and then you create either a presentation or basically you just run through the photos and you let the rest of the team guess whose desk this is. Of course, this can create some very fun situations. If you see that the desk is super messy, okay, that's that guy. If you see that it's super clean, you know, oh, okay, that's this is this is that and that colleague. So it can lead to some very nice and fun conversations. And if you uh, have connection to your CEO or someone from the top management, it's always fun to to ask them as well to submit a, a photo of their uh, remote work setup and basically just to shuffle it into the uh, rest of the pictures, and uh, they would never guess whose uh, workspace that is. So that's just a, an extra tip there for you. Uh, another thing is we, Susanna already talked about the virtual pub quiz, but I would like to talk about another type of quiz that you can run, and that would be focused only about your team members. So there are two ways how you can run this. Uh, either you basically collect from each team member, you collect two truths and one lie about them. And then what you do is you run a series of questions about each of them. And then the rest of the team has to guess which one is a lie about, in this case, about Sarah. Uh, this is a great way how they can find out some new information about the team members, maybe some funny things about them. Really, they get to know uh, the team much better. Now, the second way how you can run the team quiz is basically that you just uh, ask your colleagues to submit one single statement about them. And that could be something super shocking, like something that uh, the other team members have no idea about. And then you basically just share that one statement as a question and you let the other team members guess who that uh, is about. 
So this is just two ways how you can run a quiz focused on your team members. And this is great fun. And of course, at the end, you can have a quiz winner. And when there is a prize, there is always more fun as well, right? So the competitive side of your team really comes into play in this activity. Another great way how you can really find out a lot about your colleagues is to run a internal couch talk. Now we've been running a series of couch talks uh, at Slido every two weeks. And even when we switch to a fully remote setup, we continue doing these couch talks in an online environment. So what is a couch talk? Basically, we always invite one guest, so any employee, and we literally have a kind of interview a chat with this person about their childhood, about their professional or personal life. And then we let other colleagues ask questions. So we really get to know this person as much as possible in those 20 to 30 minutes. And we of course rotate uh, people from various teams. So we really get to know as many people and as many departments as possible. And it doesn't really require any special preparation because of course those questions will come in naturally from the other colleagues as well. And it's just really nice way how to find out more about your colleagues. And the last activity I would like to share with you is, a, an, is an internal TED talk. I'm sure uh, most of you have watched a TED talk before, but why not to turn, take this internally and uh, live stream or uh, basically do it via Zoom or any other video conference platforms. You can do this talk online as well. Uh, I'm sure many of your colleagues have something they're passionate about. And now we run a series of talks like that. Uh, we call them lightning talks. Uh, at our offsite, actually, that was an in-person event, but you can uh, do this definitely online as well. So basically, someone talks about their passion for 10 minutes, let's say, and then the next five minutes is spent on questions from, from the rest of the colleagues. So that way they can learn something about the colleagues, uh, but they can also learn something about a new activity that maybe they would like to try. I remember very vividly a colleague of ours gave a very passionate TED talk about raising three kids and it was just hilarious. People were laughing and it was just a great way how to find out more about him, uh, see what his, the kids look like, see what they like to uh, do and so on. And it was just a beautiful example of how you get to really know your colleagues better, even those colleagues that you are not in touch with every day. Uh, the wrap-up question before we come to the uh, Q&A, uh, we have really received a lot of questions, but we would love to find out which of these activities you liked the most. And you can pick up to three. So uh, this, uh, altogether, there are 15 of them, and I'm sure you don't remember them uh, anymore. So now if you just basically skim through them and uh, if you had to decide what are the activities that you liked the most, we would really love to find out. So what, what is the thing that you really got your attention? And just a comment here, the, the percentages will not add up uh, since we asked you to act, uh, to uh, submit uh, more than just one answer. Uh, so just in case you're wondering, <laughs> it won't add up to 100. <laughs> So, yeah. And when I see the silent hero in the winning position, I think I forgot to mention one very important thing, and that is, so once a person actually nominates someone and also uh, answers this question of why they nominated this person, there is a dedicated person who collects all these answers and then distributes them to those silent heroes. So I think that's the very important uh, thing to add to this activity, that actually those silent heroes get to get to listen to the feedback and they get to read about why they are so great and why they've been nominated as a, as a silent hero. I can actually uh, recall several times when I got my silent hero answer and I, it made me cry. <laughs> it's normally very touching so really try it it's, it's beautiful and yes silent hero seems to be winning together with guest the desk and virtual pop quiz. Beautiful. As well as the team quiz. And the photo of the week, I think that one is just like super easy and you can just set it up as a challenge in your team and, you know, do it even this week. So, yeah, I like the part that uh, also AMA with leadership got 22%. I think it's really important that people get the answers uh, to their questions. 
speaking about questions, Christina, should we move on to questions now? Yes, please. Let's do so because we have 10 minutes left and we have so many questions, but I promise to you, we will get, uh, we will address the unanswered questions as well. So uh, right. let's try to use those 10 minutes to, to make the most out of this time. And let's go to the very first question from Jeremy. Can you share that list of ideas from the audience? Definitely we can. I think we will be sending an email after this, um, after this uh, webinar. Uh, so Christina, I think we can just uh, send it there as well. Of, of course, course. I think it's a very interesting list. So I'm sure a majority of you would love to see those, uh, those ideas. Mm -hmm. All right, UK, UK EF events are asking, or maybe commenting, I think this is a great one. We do fridge magnet quizzes, show off a magnet and ask everyone where it's from. I love that one. That's a beautiful one. That's a beautiful one. I love it. I actually, I actually saw a team do this and I think it's, it's a great, a great one. Thank you very much for sharing. Christina, question for you from uh, Kaushik. How did you celebrate as a team virtually? Actually, there are a few uh, ways how you can do that. Of course, if you, if you uh, even have the budget, uh, you can, of course, invite everyone for a drink so they can buy themselves some drinks and actually do the proper celebration. But even if, uh, if not, you can, uh, uh, I think your question was about what the, the gesture was, if perhaps I am assuming correctly. So uh, in, the, in the last All Hands uh, that we had, we were actually encouraged to send a heart so the heart was the kind of gesture that we agreed upon or it was kind of recommended uh, for us to use. So we, we use the heart as a, as a gesture to, to celebrate. Right, and the next question from, from Joyce, can you recommend any sites for online games? Julie, you are the expert. <laughs> uh, thanks, uh, thanks for asking that. Um, I think in the comment, oh sorry, in the questions, you can see quite a lot of suggestions. Um, I think we should uh, we should keep it there, Christina. Uh, but uh, for for us, what we played uh, was Catan. I don't know if you know Settlers of Catan. Uh, it's a great game, like a board game uh, that you can go through. Uh, there's also I think um, somebody yeah Jeremy also recommended Goose Chase Scavenger Hunt. Uh, so you can check that GooseChase.com. Um, there is also play cards against humanity uh, with your colleagues. Um, also, I was a part of a poker game. So that was really fun. Uh, we had one of our friends who was in charge and he did the whole setup and we had to have a Zoom installed on a computer and then do another call on WhatsApp to see our cards. Uh, so that was really fun, but one person has to dedicate to be the, uh, the one who is dealing the cards. Uh, so you can do that as well, or, you know, you can play games like, uh, guess what I'm thinking of, or things like that. Um, did you play any games, Christina, yourself? Uh, I'm, uh, actually, the only online games I play are click quizzes as well, and, uh, and then I really love doing quiz duel, which basically you can uh, challenge a friend of yours, and you can pick categories, and uh, so yeah, quizzes are my thing. So either we do quizzes for Slido, or then if I want to challenge my friends, then we do the two on two uh, via quiz as well. So yeah, that's that's my thing. But one on more, the, sorry, uh, sorry, one more. Uh, if you know a board game Seven Wonders, that one is online as well. For those of you who know it, I love it. You can do that as well. Perfect. And Susanna, can you please demonstrate Silent Hero or provide step-by-step -step instructions? Yes, of course. Thank you, Peter, for asking. So you set up a word cloud poll in Slido. Uh, so we just say who was the silent hero of the month. And you can set it up as a survey with a different with another question saying, uh, tell us why this person was a, uh, was a silent hero for you. So just set up a word cloud and an open text poll. Tell us why. And you let it run. You wait for the people to submit um, their names. For us in Slido, we use our Slack names. So everybody knows uh, that they are supposed to submit a Slack name of that person. You can decide to do uh, type in a name and a last name together so that you can see that like, I don't know, Kristina Kumor or Zuzana Bojikova. Um, so you can do that and then you let it go. So people submit their answers. Eventually you show it on the screen and you will see out of the word cloud 
who is the most submitted person. Uh, so who won the whole silent hero? But that doesn't mean that the rest of the team is not ce doesn't celebrate too. Uh, so then after the whole call is done or after the whole meeting is done, one person, usually for us, it's our HR. Uh, they take care of the answers and they distribute every answer to the person who was submitted as a silent hero. So even if I didn't win as a person, uh, the whole silent hero competition, let's say, I would still get, if somebody submits me as their silent hero, I would still get that one answer, um, what they wrote. Was that clear? And I would just like to add that we will definitely, uh, in the follow-up email that you'll receive with the recording and the slides, you'll definitely get a detailed uh, instruction on how you set up your silent hero, because I see this is very popular. So no worries. If you didn't get Susanna's explanation, you will get it from the email. I promise. Great. Uh, we got a comment here. So that's a great event. Please, can you share all these engagement methods following this that I'd like to share with my internal communications colleagues? Of course. And I'm going to just jump in here uh, with K uh, Katie's question. How do you organize the quiz with different teams of people, Christina? Oh, of course, uh, with different teams of people. All right. Um, so if you organize the quiz in, in Slido, you, you do it on, individual, on an individual basis. So you don't have teams, you have just individuals uh, voting for themselves. But if you run the quiz using a different tool, uh, Susanna, are you an expert on the quizzes outside of Slido? Am I? <laughs> I'm asking you. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, there are some other tools that you can use, of course. Um, but the question, I'm not sure if the question is about the, that there is different teams of people. Uh, for us, what we do with Christina, we don't do a, uh, like a specific uh, team question, or you can, you can even do like one team is guessing questions about other teams. So that's a good thing to do. And we are doing these quizzes all online. So anybody can join whoever gets uh, the, 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 the link. I, but I see here from Gemma, if I'm saying it correctly, sorry, if not, uh, you could use breakout rooms on Zoom for team quizzes. So in case you wanna just have the, the one team there and break up a session, you can definitely do that on Zoom. Yeah, I don't know, Christina. Add. But perhaps if you meant the question uh, as a, if you can actually ask them, uh, ask the team various questions so they would be applicable for all of them, you can, of course, uh, schedule a quiz that will be basically about, I don't know, general knowledge, or we run a pop culture pop quiz the other week. So it was really applicable to all teams. Everyone could have joined in, and it was, it was basically, it was fun. Uh, moving on to the next question from, from Jan. Could you share how you are toggling between slides and live posts so seamlessly? It's fabulous. Thank you very much, Jen. Uh, Susie. Yes, I love this question because I love to introduce our Google Slides integration here. Um, so the way, yes, there was a comment from UKEF about our switcher. Uh, so that's one thing you can use switcher. It's a tool you download to your computer and you can switch Slido with any tool or any presentation software you're using. But since we are using Google Slides, we have an integration with Google Slides that you can check out at slido.com slash Google Slides. And what do you do? You basically add the polling or Q&A straight into your presentation. So you don't have to worry about any other, you know, toggling between windows or doing anything like that. You just go, you know, like we did, we just went through our slides and we had planned everything before so we knew that these are the polls that we are going to ask and honestly for me i love it because i don't have to worry about um uh, like what is going to go next because i have it straight in my google slides in case you're not using google slides you can always go for switcher but thank you jen uh, for the comment that it's fabulous love it all right um i see a lot of comments here and i love them thank you very much for posting them uh we got a question from nicola here what are the best virtual social activities to do with a team of four of 17 not four 17. <laughs> this is a really nice number you can do many i would say almost everything that we've actually mentioned because a team of 17 means that you can really all of you can have the cameras on you can actually have enough time so that everyone can actually contribute to the discussion and uh, if you think this is too much you can of course perhaps split it into two parts and then uh, have the rotational kind of uh, system that you always kind of mix the people so 
you have uh, two groups of people having virtual coffees and then the next week you would switch them up again so that way everyone would kind of meet together and get to know each other better in a small, smaller circle, not, not 17 people. But yeah, all of these things that we've mentioned, I would say are pretty much applicable to a team of 17. Just to uh, build up on what Christina said, uh, the highlights that I was mentioning, it was 16 of us. So almost the same size. Um, also for the quizzes, the virtual quiz that we did with the team and we were picking on our colleagues, I think it was 17 of them. Um, so um, I think 17 is honestly, for me, 12 to 20 is like the perfect size because you, you already have some engagement happening, uh, but you still have the facilitation of somebody who's facilitating the whole event. And it's not like five people, that's a bit different. Um, so 17 is great. And I would really love to uh, highlight a comment uh, from, from Joyce. Uh, they have done a virtual bake-off and a virtual pet show. I love both of them because I love to bake and I love my rabbits. So uh, <laughs> guys, if you haven't tried these two, uh, I'm very now, I'm very inspired to try these at uh, some point during this remote functioning. So thank you very much, Joyce, for that one. And uh, Susanna, let's maybe grab another one question before we wrap up. Yes, I think I found a great question from Jeremy here. Um, and I think this is the last one, I guess. Uh, do people ask the questions in the AMA anonymously? Uh, yes and no. Uh, so you can actually, so in Slido, you can either give them that right to ask anonymous questions or you don't have to give them that right. But uh, so here at Slido, we normally at our internal meetings, we have, uh, we have it enabled. So of course, anyone can ask anonymous questions. And uh, of course we encourage uh, people to put their names down, but you will, at the beginning, when you experiment with, with these AMAs and Q and A's round, you'll really, if you want to get as many questions and as possible, I really actually encourage you to, to turn on that anonymous feature because people will be afraid to, to ask those questions at the start. But as the time progresses and as they are more used to asking questions and really standing up for them, then they will slowly start putting their names down as well. But yes, uh, there is nothing wrong with asking the anonymous questions. Uh, it's all about how you teach the people to ask them in a correct way. So there is nothing offensive. And uh, of course, I'm sure your people would be, uh, would be uh, of course, not willing to, to share something, something nasty. So thank you very much, Jerry. That was a very, very good question. Uh, as I've said, we will address the unanswered questions. You will get everything in your follow-up email together with the recording and slides and with the instruction on how to create a silent hero. But uh, before we say goodbye to you, I would really love to ask you to uh, fill out a feedback form for us. There are just two very simple questions. It will take you no more than 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds if you write a comment. We'll be super grateful to you uh, and we will know what to improve until the next time. Well, thank you so much guys for joining. It was, it was a pleasure having you here. Also, um, thank you very much for all the comments that you added. Um, I think they were amazing. All those comments about muck, muck contests. I think we're going to start doing those as well. Um, I think these are great things to uh, get inspired. So feel free to grab these ideas as well. And yeah, thank you very much for joining. And let us know if there's anything, uh, if you have any more questions, you can always reach out uh, to us on the emails that you can see here on the slide, as well as always go to our Slido website. And in the bottom right corner, you see a chat, bo no, chat, no, chat box, because it's actually with our colleagues. There are no chat bots here. Uh, so in Slido, we are very proud to say that you can talk to our team and you can get advice anytime. So thank you. Thank you, Christina, for hosting the webinar with me. Thank you, Susanna, for joining me. And thank you, everyone, for joining us and asking so many great questions and posting so many great comments. Thank you again. And have thank a you. lovely rest of the day. Thank you. Bye.